Good morning. In this video we're going to talk about something called iteration and this will be part one of the series on iteration. Iteration is uh, essentially repeatedly applying the same function over and over. And examples of when you that might be useful are calculating mortgage loan payments. Um, the it, function being iterated there is you um, take how much you owe, you tack on interest, and then you subtract the payment, and then you do that over and over to calculate how much you still owe. And hopefully that number goes down eventually to zero. Um, so I think um, this will be covered in part two. And what we're going to talk about in this video are these applications. So um, we can use iteration, as I'll show you how, to approximate solutions to nonlinear equations. Okay, um, and then we're going to mention chaos theory in part one of this video series on iteration. Um, there's two things you'll need to know in order to get the most out of this video. Um, one is algebra or pre-calculus. Um, so enough so that if I say f of x is um, x squared um, and x is 4, then f of, well, I don't have to say that. Let's say f of 4 would be what? If you know the answer to that question, then you'll probably be fine. And it happens to be 4 squared, and that would be 16. So if you said 16, then you're probably... Um, right on track to get the most out of this video. Or if you don't have that knowledge, then curiosity will probably carry you through this video. So in part two, we'll talk about calculating mortgage loan payments using something to do with iteration. So let's first take a look at um, approximating solutions to nonlinear equations. So the first equation um, that I want to solve is x squared equals 2. And by the way, the uh, parentheses asterisk is just a comment. Okay, so I'm commenting out all this stuff, so none of it gets actually calculated. Um, so if you remember your algebra or pre-calculus, um, x squared equals 2 does not have a rational number solution. It has two irrational solutions known as the square root of 2. Um, so if I just type in square root of 2 here it gives me square root of 2 back. Okay, so I'm going to tell it to give me a numerical approximation, which is that. 1.41421. Now I can make it go to more decimal places if I want. Let's try 150 decimals. That's the square root of 2 to um, 150 decimals. 1.414213 blah 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 okay and the question that 
um, I often wondered is how does the calculator or computer program in, in this case, how does it know that it's 1.414 or so on? Because clearly it doesn't have enough memory to remember the square root of 2 and the square root of 2.005 and 06 it just doesn't remember doesn't have enough memory to recall that all that stuff okay there's just too much to remember well turns out that there's actually ways to get what the answer is that involve iteration. So how is this done? Well, um, let me go over here and copy this over here. So What, what it's doing here is I'm this part here is I'm defining a function called g and the variable is x okay so then the name of the function is g and the variable is independent variable is x is this weird seeming random almost function um, so I'm just changing this to make it fit the screen better. Um, what nest list does is it's going to take the function g, which I just defined up here. Um, by the way, let me quit the kernel just to make sure that I'm not accidentally dub, you know, redefining things. So this will launch the kernel. There's the kernel. Um, so g is going to be defined to be this weird function x minus the quantity of uh, x squared minus 2 divided by the quantity 2x. And what this function does is kind of cool because what, what Nestlis is doing is it's going to take the number 1 and get a result g of 1 okay whatever that is then it's going to take that number the output and plug it back into g over and over again 12 times total and you notice a pattern in what these later numbers are converging to yes well it 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 looks like the square root of 2 um, so let's look at this in more detail. So g of 1 is 1 1.5. So we're starting with 1 and then 1 1.5. So g of 1 1.5 is going to be this number. So g of 1 1.5 is 1 1.41667. Okay, these two are the same. Now g of that is the next number and you repeatedly do this and it converges to the square root of 2. Now if we wanted we can use we could have used exact 100% accurate values by using rational numbers and the numbers get very uh, unwieldy okay but it starts off as 1 then 1 1.5 is 3 halves the next number apparently would have been 17 twelfths um, so putting this decimal point here just forces it to approximate them all okay so the result here is that the iterate iterates 
of 1 under G um, converge to the square root of 2. Okay. Now, that initial one that we had, that was just um, called a seed value. So let's let's say we again are trying to find the square root of two approximately. Let's start with fifty. Notice what happens in the results. So we're starting with fifty. Next number is twenty-five point zero two. Okay, so so far. So remember, square root of two. Well, let's see, square root of two is roughly this to fifty decimal places. When we started with one here and found the iterates of one, it got close to the square root of two pretty quickly. So by the um, second iterate or the third number in the list um, the first two digits were correct now here it takes longer but look what eventually happens what eventually happens here is that the numbers converge to square root of 2 and you can prove that no matter what you start with the result is going to converge to the square root of 2 alright now I've collected some results for you um, again this is a uh, in case I lose my mind or my files. Um, this is on iteration. And what we're doing here is we're taking the number one and we're applying this function to one and then whatever our answer is we'll plug that back into the function and keep doing that which is called iteration. Um, what we're going to calculate is the first 12 iterates of one under G and then I'm going to plot them. So as you can see, they converge. And what they converge to is the square root of 2. So that gives me 15, roughly 15 um, digits of square root 2. So you start with 1 plug 1 into this function, replace x with 1, then you'll get 1.5 um, and so on. You repeatedly re apply g to the previous number to get the next number. This one converges to the square root of 2 rather quickly. So the horizontal axis is telling you how many times you've iterated the function and the output is um, the out well it is the um, nth iterate of the function this is what happens when you start at 2 instead of 1 so you can see the graphs look different but look at the numbers at the end compare that to square root 2 okay they're still converging to square root 2 even though you started with a different seed value. Now I'm starting at 100 because in general I have no idea where a solution to a nonlinear equation is going to be. And by the way the equation we're trying to solve here is um, x squared equals 2. Okay, the slu one of the solutions to that is square root 2. That's called a nonlinear equation. And so in this case, um, we're using the same function but a different seed value of 100 just to show you that.
the iterates still converge to the square root of 2, but they arrive at that in a different way. Okay. Now, with this different function g, what it's going to calculate, and you may, if you're a mu musician, you may recognize this number. Um, this is the twelfth root of two, so it's two to the one twelfth. Let's get around ten decimals for that. One point oh five nine four six three blah blah blah. One point oh five nine four six. So. My calculator doesn't memorize all these things. Okay, what it's doing is something like this, where you give it a function, and it it will take a seed value, okay, that it that it uses, and then keep iterating the function until the program notices that oh, it's uh, nothing's happening in my answers. That's when we know that we're very close to a fixed point. Okay. Fixed points are very important. Now, we say f fixes x if f of x is just x. We also say x is a fixed point of f if f of x equals x. What that means is you plug in x, get x as an output. If that happens, then x is called a fixed point of f. Um, so for example, let f of x equal, uh, let's say, x squared. Um, then 0 and 1 are fixed points of f. Why is that? Well, f of 0 is 0 squared, not 9 squared, but 0 squared, and that is 0. So f of 0 equals 0, that means 0 is a fixed point of f, and 1 squared, so f of 1 is 1 squared, and that's 1, so again, f of 1 equals 1, so 1 is also a fixed point. Zero and 1 are fixed points of f. f. Now let's look at the iterates. Let's call that function, well let's call it f, x squared, oops, x squared, not 2 to the x. f of x equals x squared. Nest list um, f comma, let's try 0, and calculate the first 12 iterates. Okay. Now, if you keep in mind this example here, remember 0 is a fixed point of f. What's going to happen when I tell it to calculate the first 12 iterates of 0? Think about that. Remember, and I'm, not, I'm going to try not to say it immediately, um, when you plug in 0, what do you get as an output? Think about what's written in gray above, right here. Um, so you might have predicted this outcome 
all zeros. Here we go. All zeros. Same thing if we got one in there as the seed, because that's a fixed point, okay, of the function. What happens when you start with two? Are they going to converge to one or zero? Well, no, actually they get huge. This is repeatedly squaring a number, two in this case. So we're starting with two, square that, you get four, repeat, so you squared that and you get 16. So then you squared that and you get 256. And if you're squaring the previous number, then the numbers get huge really fast. So the way we describe this is by saying um, up here the square root of 2 is an attracting fixed point of G and if you notice um, if you take the time to calculate it G of square root 2 is square root 2. So root 2 really is a fixed point of G. Um, but there's different kinds of fixed points. Attracting is one type. Attracting means that even if you change the seed from 1 to 2 to 100, the fixed point square root 2 is still eventually the outcome. Now, in this case, it's the opposite. Um, you might think all fixed points are attracting, but that's not true. Um, they're not all attracting. So, for example, we know that 1 is a fixed point of this function x squared because f of 1 is 1. But when we change the seed to 2, we don't get something that uh, converges to 1, we get something where it's repelled by 1. These are called uh, repelling fixed points. So in this example, 1 is a repelling fixed point for F. Okay. So, um, now let's look at something a little bit more interesting, perhaps. Um, so this new function I'm going to define is 3x times the quantity 1 minus x, and let's look at the first 40 iterates of 0.5 okay superficially nothing strange going on and I'm doing this on purpose here you see part of the graph it looks like it's converging looks like it's an, an attractive fixed point but lo and behold there's actually two parts to the graph now if you look at these iterates, um, you start with a half, plug it into g, which is 3x times 1 minus x, okay, and you keep plugging in the, the result back into the function, and if you look at here, um, it looks like it's converging to two different numbers one around 0.699 and the other one's around 0.63 so that's a little strange um, let's take a, another look at that um, so these are what are called um, periodic points uh, 
Um, so what are the periodic points here? Well, we can have it solve for g of g of x equals x for x. Uh -huh. So the function here is uh, 3x times 1 minus x. This is called a logistic map, if you want to look it up on Wikipedia. And we're starting with a seed of 0.5, and we're looking at the first 40 iterates. So if you notice, it's bouncing between something around 0.63 and something around 0.7. So this is what it's doing. Remember, the horizontal axis is telling you which iterate that is, how many times you've applied the function. And the y-axis, vertical axis, is the um, output of that particular iterate. So it looks like we have convergence to something around 2 thirds, but um, it hops around a little bit, and it's kind of weird. But that's not chaos. So maybe I should move. Move this over to here. OK, so. If you look at these functions, when you iterate them, they seem to have this behavior where the fixed point is attracting. Or repelling. OK, so um, Let's start with uh, five iterates. Yeah, so if you could imagine that the scale of this is very high, so um, it doesn't take long. See that the iterates, if you imagine one is like around here, okay, then the next iterate it's being repelled away from that whereas in these cases the fixed point is attracted to so that's a repelling fixed point and also this is an attracting fixed point that's kind of different and then this will be an example of actual chaos so let's see what happens when we graph this. That's chaos. OK. So notice that the 20th iterate is around 0.82. So this is a demonstration of chaos. Um, what if we started with, so I want to write that down. Let's see. So um, 20th iterate of 0.2 under g is 0.82. 0014. Now if we change that to something slightly different, not very different, but just slightly different, so the initial value is now 0.20001. I want to show you how 
it is going to be way different. So now the 20th iterate is 0 0.311. So those are very different. And what this is demonstrating is what's called sensitivity to initial conditions. And this is also known as the butterfly effect, which you probably have heard of at some point. So this is chaos. This is convergence, but a different type of convergence. This is divergence uh, in the case of a repelling fixed point, and this is an attracting fixed point, which converge. The iterates converge to, in this case, the twelfth root of two, which is about one point oh five nine four six. Okay, so that concludes part one. Um, in part two we're gonna see how iteration can be used to calculate what the monthly payment of a loan should be to, in order to pay it off after so many years